The UPS man just delivered my new stamp album. Stick around and check it out with me. Before I get into the album, I'd like to call your attention to another uh, new YouTube philatelic channel I've just discovered recently. It's only a month old and it's by Lawrence Fisher and it's called Stories Behind the Stamps. And in his videos, Lawrence goes over just that, the stories behind the stamps. What, what are the circumstances surrounding the issuance of that particular issue? They are short, concise videos and I think you're going to enjoy them. I've left the link to his channel down below in the description. So head on over there after you watch this program and give him a like, a subscribe and give him your support. All right, so let's rip into this thing. I ordered this off of the, uh, uh, the Palo Albums website. They had a sale going on for November and I went ahead and took the plunge. I splurged. As noted in the title, this is a Davo Lux Switzerland album. Packaged inside some plastic wrap. Here we go, a nice navy blue slip case with the album inside for Switzerland. Or as it's called in Switzerland, Helvetia. Here you can get a closer look at it. It is a one and a half inch binder. That is the spine is one and a half inches wide with a Swiss coat of arms. And as you note by this one, this is volume one, which covers all the stamps up through the year 1944. It's in a slightly padded cover. And it measures just over 11 by 12 inches. Well, the cover is 12 and a half inches and the pages are 12 inches. As you see, this is by Davo, and it is a hingeless album, which means each space comes pre-mounted with a stamp mount. And all you have to do is pull up the upper layer of the mount, slip your stamp inside, and voila! Pages are 80 pound paper, printed one sided, and the pages are white. Not a real bright white like this laser printing paper. You can see it's a, just a touch darker than the bright white. And each uh, space for a stamp is notated with the denomination and the colors in both uh, French and German. The front section of the album is devoted to the regular issues. And there are 27 pages taking us up to 1945. They've actually included two issues there for 1945. Following that section, we come to the airmails. And the airmail section takes up four pages through the 1947 issue. After the airmails, then we come to the section for the semi-postal stamps. There 
Here the semi-postals take up six pages through 1945. The next section of the album is for franchise stamps. Franchise stamps were free franking stamps that were distributed to certain uh, industries and charitable organizations for free posting, for free postage. And these special franchise stamps showed that the actual postage rate is paid even though they didn't pay for them. After that, we come to the postage due stamps. And the postage due stamps take up four pages through 1938. And then the last page here with the page number TE is for the telegraph stamps. So now I'll spend a few days transferring my Swiss collection from the existing album to this one. And I'll just make note of any issues, how the stamps uh, listed in the album compare to what's in the Scott album, and check out other things like uh, see if pages fall out or stamp mounts fall off of the pages, and you know, quality issues, and just check out the whole thing and let you know how it is. So give me a few days for that. But in the meantime, how about another top 10 list? From Jack Portwood, also known as Coast Watcher on the Stamp Bears Forum, comes his top 10 USA stamps. And I'm just going to be quiet and let these stamps speak for themselves. All right, another great group of stamps, huh? So remember, if you'd like to see your own top 10 list featured in a future episode, just email me your list at tedtalkstamps at gmail.com. And just another reminder before I get on with the album review, you've heard me talk about the IPDA several times before, and I'm going to repeat it again because that is something that me and my colleagues at the IPDA are passionate about. We want to bring honesty and integrity and safety back to the process of buying stamps on the internet. There's a lot of dodgy dealers out there from those selling cheap, low value, low catalog value stamps for hundreds of dollars to dealers selling genuine stamps with fake overprints, especially of Third Reich material without any indication that these are fake overprints. And we want you to know that you will not find these dodgy practices among IPDA dealers. So if you're a stamp dealer and these are also your principles, then hop on over to the website and fill out an application today. If you're a collector and all you do is buy stamps, you can head over to the IPDA website also and, and look at the list of all of the dealers in, in over 25 countries around the world and find someone near you who you can deal with. And I've left the link to the website in the description below. Okay, so back to the Davo Lux Switzerland Hingeless Stamp Album. That's a mouthful, isn't it? What did I think about it? Well, spoiler alert, I returned it. 
In fact, I returned it so quickly, I didn't even keep it around long enough to, to use in this part of the video. The big problem with it is that it is a simplified album. What does that mean? It means that they've left out spaces for a lot of stamps that they feel are unnecessary that you don't need to collect. For example, take this issue from Switzerland. In the Scott catalog, these are Scott numbers 14 through 40. That's 28 stamps. Granted, there are only five denominations, but they were printed and reprinted in uh, variations over the years. Thick paper, thin paper, some have green silk threads in them, some have blue, some are plain paper, some are granite paper. So, like I said, so all together over the years, there were 28 of these. And uh, Scott, like I said, gives has 28 major catalog numbers. A major number being that the Scott editors feel that this is a distinct enough uh, issue of this stamp to rate being an issue all, all on its own. While there are minor uh, catalog numbers for where there were minor variations in, uh, say, in the, in the design color instead of a brown color, it, they printed some up in a yellow brown color and they feel that might be just a minor difference and they give it a minor number. But there are 28 major catalog numbers for this series in the Davo album they give you exactly seven. One for each of the denominations. That is pretty simplified. Another example is here. From 1907 to 1925, Switzerland issued a series of stamps showing Helvetia sitting on a rock with a sword. In 1908, they issued the 40 cent stamp in the colors of red, violet, and yellow. 14 years later, they reprinted the stamp in the dark blue color. Now this is more than a minor variation, it's a major color change. Yet Davo does not feel fit to include the 40 cent blue in the album. Looking at the 60 cent stamp, that one was issued in 1918 and as you can see just above it to the right you see a 7, that's the 70 cent stamp for which there is a space where previously there was a 50 cent stamp in front of it there is no space for the 60 cent stamp. This is not even a variation. It is just a stamp they, they decided to leave out for who knows why. I found this pretty frustrating that they simplified this album to that extent, especially for an album that costs so much and is supposed to be a premium, deluxe item. Now granted, collectors in different parts of the world kind of develop their own uh, style of collecting. Collectors in the Netherlands, where this album is produced, don't collect according to a Scott catalog. And I get that, but it still seems overly simplified to me. And to be fair, I guess, they did mention it on the website, although it's just a fleeting mention in the, in the promotional text on the website. Davo Lux Country Albums exude quality and craftsmanship. Made in Holland since 1945, these simplified, luxurious albums are bound in navy blue, blah, blah, blah. So there you go. I should have picked up on that. These simplified albums. <laughs> okay, setting aside the simplicity, what else was wrong? Well, elsewhere on the Palo Albums website, Palo Albums being the distributor of Davo in, in uh, North America, or at least in the States, I'm not sure. But uh, they state that one of the benefits of buying their hingeless albums is the precision in which the mounts are placed on the page. Here too, I found them disappointing. Here's an example, as you can see, especially looking at the bottom edge, the mount is skew on the album page, tilted up quite a bit on the left side. Now this was probably the most egregious example, but there were also quite a few lesser examples of skewed stamp mounts on the pages. And I just found this unacceptable. And after a few back and forths through email with 
I don't know, the marketing director or someone at Palo Albums, I decided to return the album. This was just too much to pay for something with so many faults. Now to try to provide a little balance, I can tell you what's good about the album. Like I showed earlier, it is it appears to be a, a quality binder. It's padded and it, it seems to be more sturdy than your average uh, you know, school binder. It is the least expensive of the major hingeless albums. Uh, for example, Safe and Lighthouse hingeless albums, sorry, Safe and Lindner uh, hingeless albums are both very expensive. They're like, you know, the uh, top end of the hingeless albums, top end as far as price anyways. And then there's uh, Lighthouse albums, and with the Davo Lux albums, for the one price, you get the album pages, the binder, the slip cover, and uh, you get the coat of arms of the country on the cover and on the spine, which uh, you don't get with the other ones. The uh, binders and dust covers are usually sold separately, as well as the pages, and the price quickly just goes to the moon with those other companies. So I can give you that. They are affordable compared to the other companies. I've spoken with other collectors about their experiences with Davo and other Hingeless albums, and I got confirmation from them that yes, yes, they are quality binders and you know they're, they're not falling apart. Uh, However, they did take issue with the white pages, the white pages, and I agree, although I said it wasn't quite as bright as the, you know, the printer paper I compared it to, it's still white paper and it, and it looks, it gives it a homemade look to me. Give it a nice, uh, you know, pale ivory color and, you know, you know, give it a more luxury look and feel to it. So the bottom line is, this stamp album was not for me. It didn't suit my collecting style. If you're a collector who does not go into the, you know, the comprehensive collection of a country, you know, getting every variety of color and perforation and types of paper, then this might suit you. And it is relatively affordable, especially when you catch them when they're having a 20% off sale. But as I reiterate once again, for me, it was unsuitable and I just have to give it a thumbs down. So I hope you found this review helpful. If you did, click the like button and the subscribe and the bell icon to get notified of future episodes as they go up. Thanks once again for watching and until next time, don't worry, be stampy.